Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the time warp feature for your motion clips. Uh, basically how you can use ease in and ease out uh, for your motion clips to kind of uh, add emphasis and, and dynamism to your motions. We're also going to take a look at the loop and the speed functions as well. So first on the screen we have this uh, cool looking Android type character here and I've applied three separate motion clips to him. You can see them in the timeline here. Uh, the titles Walk Loop, uh, Jump to Endurance, and Sneak Walk Fast End. Okay. So I go back to the uh, frame zero and play these back by pressing the space key. You can see them all in their beauty there combined together. Right, and these motions are available from our Assassin's Motion Content Pack. Uh, I'll provide those in a, uh, I'll provide a link for those in the description below. You can find them in the content store. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the basics first, which is speed and loop. All right, so we play back one more time. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click, uh, hold my alt, no, uh, halt, alt key first and scroll my mouse button to zoom out all right and uh, you can zoom in and out by holding alt and scrolling your mouse button by the way really useful tip there i'm going to hold control and click on both of my clips and just kind of move them over uh, to the side here because we're going to focus first on our walking loop all right so i'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that one let's take a look at speed all right so on your character or on your character on your clip rather you'll see a uh in parentheses you'll see the speed of your clip it says in this case times one so that's 100 percent speed of the original clip now what you can do up here is go up to speed you can toggle speed or loop we're going to talk about speed first and you can click and drag on the edge of your clip to extend your speed and make it slower you can see now we're at uh, times whatever let's go to times 0.5 so 50 percent slower right or 50% uh, of the original speed we play back you can see we have a much slower two steps like that and on the other hand we can also click and drag it to make it faster let's make it times two all right so basically twice the speed of the original there you go all right a lot faster all right that's basically all there is to it speed make it make it slower make it faster <laughs> just make sure you are paying attention to this uh, little number right here which will tell you how fast your uh, um, speed is according to, in comparison to the original clip. All right, so I'm going to click and drag this a little bit longer. Let's make it about 20% faster than the original. So 1.2 speed, all right, 1.2 times. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just play that back. So a little bit faster than the original, but uh, not much. So that's all there is to speed. Let's talk about looping now. So I'm going to go here to the looping uh, toggle. I'm going to toggle looping on. And all you want to do to loop is click and drag on the end of your clip, just like that. And you'll see the second section here doesn't contain any cell units, okay? So there's no cell units. Basically, the second section here is just a copy or an instance of the first section. Now, this works all fine and dandy in like a linear. Uh, you can see the linear time warp right here. If I go ahead and play this back, we'll have a nice, simple loop, just like that. Nice, smooth loop because this is a loopable motion. Now, what if I wanted to apply, you know, some sort of time warp? So let's talk a little bit about the basics of time warp. Uh, I'm going to right click on my clip here and just select time warp. And let's do a nice like ease in or something like that. So with an ease in, we're going to have a, you know, a very uh, slow beginning. And it's going to speed up as we get to the end there. You can see the cell unit distribution will show you how things are going there. So if I play back, it'll start slowly and end really quickly according to the cellular distribution here, as you can see. Now this causes a problem because you can see we have and then okay, so we have two E's in because again, the second section here is just a copy, an instance of the first section. So if we wanted to, you know, have an E's in for the duration of those two looped clips, we'd have to do something else. So first I'm going to go ahead and press Control Z and undo all that and restore the original cellular distribution there. And what we need to do is we need to flatten these clips. So I'm going to right click on the first clip here and select flatten motion clips and flatten all parts. And you can see now the icon will kind of combine them together, flatten everything, and it'll seem like an, an entirely new clip, just a long one, uh, long four steps combined together. All right, and it's linear. So now if we wanted to, you know, have a nice time warp, we can do so for those four steps. All right, so let's go ahead and right click on the clip and go to time warp. And this time I'm gonna choose ease out. And the reason for this is because as he's approaching his jump, he's going to kind of slow his pace just like this. Okay. So if we go ahead and play back like this, you can see he'll slow down and get prepared for his jump. All right. 
Cool. So that's basically uh, walking and looping and your basics of time warp. Let's take a little bit of a look at uh, layered time warp and breaking your clips for emphasis and dynamism in your motions. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take my second part here again and uh, cl uh, click and drag it right next to the uh, first clip. All right. So now we have the uh, walking up to our jump like this. And boom. All right. Now this little empty area here with the green outline, this is our transition area. And this is where it transitions from iClone will blend the data from the first clip to the first frame of the second clip. All right, so this frame is frame 118 in this case. All right, so we have a nice blend, uh, uh, plants his left foot, you can see there, and then pivots to the first uh, uh, frame of this jump to endurance motion. All right, so in certain cases, you may be the ending of the first clip and the beginning of the second clip may not be exactly alike, but you can kind of cheat with the transition area a lot of the times and blend them together really nicely. We'll have other tutorials that focus more on that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add some airtime to our character here. And the way we can do that is I'm going to go and click and drag to the apex of his jump, which is maybe about uh, right here, I would say. And I'm going to actually break this clip into two. So you can break your clips and you can apply time warps to different sections of your clips. Now the way you can break it is just by right clicking and you can select break up here. Or you can make sure your time cursor is where you want, or your uh, time, or playback head rather, is where you want to break. And then go over here to this little break icon. And you can break it that way as well. You can see we've broken our clip up into two sections. All right. So we have the first section like this. And then... What we're going to do is I'm actually going to, going to ease out this first section, and that's going to create a bit more airtime. It's going to slow down the last section of the clip here. So I'm going to right-click again, use Time Warp, and we'll do the old ease out. So we'll have a bit of a faster run-up at the beginning and a bit longer airtime just with that ease out. If I play back, you can see a little bit longer airtime. Okay, not too much, but a little bit longer. Okay. And, okay, that's pretty cool. So we have this nice, uh, you know, ease out. What if I wanted to extend that even further? Well, I can do that by going to the, where our character is basically about to launch, like right here. And I'm going to right click. And I'm going to break the clip again. Now, before I do that, pay attention to the ease out distribution. Okay, so the cell unit distribution. When I, when I break the clip, that ease out information is going to be maintained. So it's going to be baked into the two separate clips but the cell unit distribution is going to go back to normal. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and right click and break. So it'll go back to normal, but that ease in, or that ease out rather, will still be baked in. So just like that, you can see we have the same ease out. So that's pretty cool. When you break the clip, it'll just bake that stuff, bake that data into the two separate clips. Okay, so what I can do to extend the jump even further, like I mentioned, is this section here. We're going to increase or rather decrease the speed of it so right now it's at 1.0 let's click and drag this third part over here and let's toggle speed on and let's stretch it out a little bit right stretch it out to maybe like uh you know 0.65 or something like that so then we can really pump up the airtime. all right there you go and then it'll kind of remain motionless for as long as there's no motion clip in existence and then we'll just kind of bring this third one over here and bring it right up to the edge of the second one there. Okay, so then we have this nice long jump like this, and then, okay, and landing like that. Now, if you want, in some cases, you can actually click and drag on the edge of your clip and just, you know, adjust the transition area as well. In this case, we don't really need it because uh, the frames are basically the same. Okay, so just stretch like that, and then a landing like this. Now, what I can do to my third part if I want to, you know, triple extend that uh, airtime on the jump, well, I can do an ease in to my uh, jump to entrance, this, this third section here. So let's go ahead and do that. Right click, select time warp and ease in. And this is going to, you know, really extend the uh, jump even further. So we'll have something like this. So and then longer extension like that. Okay. I'm going to just uh, bring this transition area a little bit in there. That should be good. All right. So we'll just kind of leave that transition area there. So we have a nice smooth and then ease out just like that okay so there we go you're ready and then boom all right so the landing is still pretty soft here in this case but what i can actually do i wanted to mention this as well you can actually customize your ease out as well so i can go ahead and right click here and go to time warp and this time i'm going to go to, go ahead to custom so we have an ease in but we can actually extend that ease in make it stronger uh, make the curve stronger 
by dragging our parameter here to the more uh, more slider. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click and drag this uh, curve edit out of the way there, and you can see now our cell unit distribution is even crazier. So if we play back now, it'll kind of just kind of almost stop in the air, and the the landing will be really strong, just like that. So that's a little bit you know too crazy. We can probably you know tame that down a little bit, bring it a little bit out like this. What you want to try to avoid is you want to try to avoid that you know stoppage. That section where he's kind of stopping. Unless you want it to stop for dramatic effect, you know, you probably want to avoid that. So you'll have to, you know, adjust your slider uh, accordingly. I think that's fine. Maybe a tiny, tiny bit less there. There we go. So almost basically back at the original. All right. But I just wanted to mention that to you that you can actually adjust, uh, customize the ease in and ease out sliders uh, according to, you know, how much emphasis you want to place on these things. All right, so we'll just leave that at ease out. Okay, so we have this long, stretchy airtime like this. Okay, and then the landing is, you know, pretty dynamic already. But what we can do to emphasize it even further, again, we can break it from where he's landing with his uh, right foot here. Let's break that clip. And again, it's going to bake all that easing information. And then here, as he lands, we're going to break it again. And then I'm going to go ahead and adjust the speed of this clip. We're going to condense it even further to make that happen even faster and more dynamic. So his, his landing is going to be really boom. Okay, so you can see it along like, almost like he's slamming the ground with his hand. It's like a boom. Uh, much more dynamic uh, landing there. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom out and uh, let's just click and drag this third section or this last clip over here. And you can see the transition area is a little bit long, so we can probably just, you know, shorten that a little bit somewhere. And let's play back the entire thing from the beginning here. So let's go ahead, frame one. So he walks up and then long air time and then a nice dynamic slam on the ground, okay? And again, you could extend that uh, that landing if you wanted to as well, but uh, we're just gonna keep it this way. So we just wanted to make, kind of put the focus on the long extended jump and then the nice, nice dynamic strong landing like that. All right, so uh, also keep in mind as well that your you know your cell unit will your cell unit size will change according to the speed. All right, so you can see the different cell unit distributions here across. Uh, keep that in mind as well. Um, let's just take a look at the final uh, uh, sneak walk here. If I go to uh, speed, if I want to make this faster, you can see I can if I condense it like this, the cell unit distribution size is, uh, is going to change there. And if we stretch it out, you can see um, when we take it up to like 100 or anything over 100, it'll kind of, uh, those cell units will increase in size, okay, so they'll become larger, whereas if you take them down to like, you know, back to the regular size right here, there you go, okay, so that's the regular uh, cell unit distribution size there. Just wanted to mention that as a final uh, afterthought here, but uh, again, yeah, that's about all there is to it, so uh, just showing you how you can really uh, use time warps to uh, add dynamism and add energy to your motions how you can layer them, you can, uh, you know, break them, you can do all kinds of stuff to manipulate these motion clips using speed and loop and everything like that. Uh, a lot of fun you can have with different motions and combining them together. All right, so that's about all there is to it, guys. Thanks so much for watching again. Uh, make sure you check out our other YouTube tutorials on our timeline more specifically, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.